Indiana football is having a historic season so far this year. It is the first time they are 5-0 since 1967. The last time they won a share of the Big Ten Conference title, they look primed to make their first bowl game since 2020, just needing one more win for bowl eligibility. The crazy thing is, they are doing all this in year one under brand new head coach Kirk Signetti. But how is that even possible? This is the rise of Indiana football. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also let me know your final win prediction total for Indiana in the comment section below. Indiana University has always been known as a basketball school rather than a football school. In basketball, they have won five national titles and have won 22 Big Ten titles, becoming a major brand under head coach Bob Knight back in the day. Football has always sort of been an afterthought at Indiana as they have only won the Big Ten twice in 1945 and 1967 and have an all-time record of 512, 712, and 44 meaning they have a .421 winning percentage. According to Indiana Hoosier on SI, they are the losingest program in college football history. This is not a blue blood football program like its basketball program. As a result, over the years, a lot more funding and attention has gone towards basketball, leaving football as an afterthought. While the program found some success under Lee Corso in the 70s and Bill Mallory in the mid-80s to mid-90s, going to seven bowl games between the two, both coaches would leave the school with a losing record. The last coach to leave Indiana with a winning record was Bo McMillan, who coached at Indiana from 1934 to 1947. After the loss in the Independence Bowl in 1993, it would be 14 years until Indiana made it back to a bowl game. After that, it would be another 8 years until they returned to a bowl game again. There was not a lot of excitement around the program until Tom Allen became head coach. Allen took over for head coach Kevin Wilson, who decided to step down following the 2016 regular season due to philosophical differences with athletic director Fred Glass. This was during a time when Indiana made it to back-to-back -back bowl games since 1990 and 1991. Allen had served as Wilson's defense coordinator and was promoted to be the team's next head coach following the resignation. Things would not start off great for Allen and Indiana as they would lose the Boster Farms Bowl 26-24 to Utah and then go 5-7 in both 2017 and 2018. Though during the 2017 season, Kevin Wilson was now the Ohio State offensive coordinator, and College Game Day made their first appearance in Bloomington for week one of the season for the Ohio State-Indiana matchup. This was a special Thursday night show for Game Day. Following the 2018 season, Allen would promote linebacker coach Kane Wolmick to be the defensive coordinator, and after offense coordinator Mike DeBoer announced his retirement, they brought in Fresno State offense coordinator Kalen DeBoer. The 2019 season would see Michael Penix and Peyton Ramsey get playing time at quarterback as Indiana finished the regular season 8-4 and four made it back to a bowl game for the first time since 2016. They beat Purdue for the first time since 2016 in a double overtime thriller 44-41 and their 8-4 and four record was the best regular season finish since 1993. Their bowl game losing streak though would continue as they would lose to Tennessee in the Gator Bowl 23-22 but 2019 was just the appetizer for what 2020 would bring. While the year 2020 is a year many of us would like to forget, for Indiana football fans, it looked like the start of a bright future. But the season almost didn't happen as the Big Ten originally canceled their season before later changing their minds and just postponing it until October. Indiana would have a new offense coordinator though as Kalen DeBoer was hired to be Fresno State's head coach. Instead, Nick Sheridan was named offense coordinator. Allen signed a seven-year contract extension as well following the 2019 season. There was a lot of excitement for the squad as they returned Michael Penix Jr. at quarterback and started the season at home against number 8 Penn State. The Hoosiers would shock Penn State beating them 36-35 in overtime after a controversial call on Penix's two-point conversion. I went back to watch the play for the video and the comment section under the play is hilarious. It was the program's first win over a top 10 team since 1987. It was the first ranked win for the Tom Allen era. This would launch Indiana all the way up to 17th in the AP poll, and they would only continue to climb. Their ranking was their highest ranking since 1993. Indiana followed that performance up with a win over Rutgers and number 23 Michigan, their first time beating the Michigan Wolverines in 33 years, and first time beating them by double digits since 1959. Indiana rose as high as number 10 in the AP poll following the win, which was their highest rank since 1969 and number 10 in the coaches poll which was their highest ranking since its inception in 1992. 
It was also the first time Indiana beat both Michigan and Penn State in the same season, and the first time since 2004 they had beaten two ranked opponents in a season. Indiana would beat Michigan State, setting up a top 10 matchup between the number 9 Hoosiers and number 3 Ohio State Buckeyes. In a game that saw Ohio State go up 28 to 7 at half, Indiana would fight back in the second half but fell short losing to the Buckeyes 42 to 35. Indiana would finish the regular season beating both Maryland and Wisconsin to finish 7th in the college football playoff rankings. At 6 and 1, they should have made the Big 10 title game as the Big 10 decided to throw out their 6 game minimum rule for the Big 10 title. Greg Doyle from the Indy Star wrote back in December of 2020 League rules say IU football won the East Division title and they have the right to play Northwestern in the Big Ten title game at Lucas Oil Stadium on December 19th. But now IU won't play in that game because the Big Ten has thrown away that rule about a six-game minimum requirement to play in Indianapolis. The Big Ten wouldn't have thrown it away to protect Northwestern in the West had the COVID-19 cookie crumbled that way. And it damn sure wouldn't have thrown it away to protect IU in the East. But the Ohio State University is the Ohio State University and a spot in the college football playoff is worth $6 million. And league schools are broke. Let's acknowledge that happened to IU football. The Hoosiers were screwed. And say it like that. Like the fact that it is. So we can move on and discuss the story like adults and say more sentences, more facts, that may be hard to accept, but true nonetheless. The Big Ten had no choice. It had to screw IU. Indiana's top 10 ranking in 6-1 and season was not enough to get them a spot in the New Year's Six Bowl, which would have been their first New Year's Six Bowl game since 1967. Instead, they played an unranked Ole Miss team, losing 26-20 in the Outback Bowl. Following the season, Kane Womack took the South Alabama head coaching job, and Tom Allen received another seven-year contract extension, making him the 18th highest paid head coach in college football. Indiana football seemed like the new kid on the block, and it looked like Tom Allen was building a monster. Until they weren't. 2021 would see Indiana go 2-10 and and 0-9 in Big Ten Conference play, and they chose to fire Nick Sheridan and bring in Walt Bell to replace him. They followed that abysmal season up with another tough season going 4-8 in 2022. But 2023 would be rock bottom for Indiana, as it took four overtimes for them to beat Akron, a team that finished 2-10 and in the MAC. They finished the year 3-9 and and decided to fire Tom Allen. The two agreed to a reduced $15.5 million buyout, it was still the largest buyout the school has ever paid and the fourth biggest buyout in college football history. Allen finished with a 33-49 record as head coach, but was 9-27 in his last three years. Indiana could have waited a year, saved millions and accepted mediocrity, but also risked losing fans and donor interest. Instead, they decided to take a risk. The decision to fire Allen came at a crossroads for the football program. Finally, the Big Ten was going to be doing away with divisions, meaning they were no longer stuck playing Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, and even Michigan State every year. They would get a more favorable schedule. The Big Ten was also expanding to 18 teams with the additions of Oregon, UCLA, USC, and Washington. It looked like the next coach was going to have a serious rebuild on their hands. Names linked to the Indiana coaching job included Justin Fry, Antoine Randall-L, Kane Wolmick, Jason Candle, and Kurt Signetti. Signetti would be the man chosen to take over the Hoosier football program. Coach Signetti made a name for himself leading James Madison to the FCS national title game in 2019 and semifinal appearances in 2020 and 2021. Before they transitioned to the FBS as a member of the Sun Belt Conference in 2022, where they went 8-3 followed by an 11-1 regular season in 2023. Due to NCAA transition rules, they weren't supposed to be eligible for a bowl game, but when not enough teams qualified, they earned a spot in the Armed Forces Bowl. Signetti finished his James Madison career going 52-9, but also found success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania going 53-17, and, and at Elon going 14-9. An overall coaching record of 119-35. His father also worked under Bobby Bowden at West Virginia. When Signetti arrived, he got right to work telling the press, I leave in the dark, I get home in the dark been a lot of 4.30, 5am mornings till 10.30, 11.30 at night. Was even in the office at 12.30 one night. Haven't done that since like 1986, but it was crunch time. It had to be done. He focused on retaining guys like Donovan McCauley, who entered the transfer portal this week, and running back Trent Howland. He brought in 10 players from James Madison as well as quarterback Curtis Rourke from Ohio and running back Justin Ellison from Wake Forest. Kyle Kamara and Elijah Surratt are two James Madison transfers 
that are putting together strong seasons so far. Signetti explained his motivation, saying, What drives me is winning, but we win the right way. I think I'm one of the top winningest active coaches in college football. I think I'm in the top seven. I don't plan on that changing here at Indiana. He is a proven program builder and a guy who could develop talent, and Indiana started the season with a win over FIU 31-7 and broke a 123-year school record in Week 2 when they destroyed Western Illinois 77-3. Signetti explained, I was trying to get a lot of people into the game. We were trying to run there, and I wanted to give the third quarterback a chance to throw at once. So we did what we could to keep the score down, but I didn't want to let them play down to the standard. I thought we responded to the message really well. Indiana's previous scoring record was when they beat Franklin College 76-0 in 1901. They also set a school record with 701 total yards, and the margin of victory was second to only that game against Franklin. Their Big Ten opener came on the road against UCLA, and the Hoosiers gave them a truly remarkable welcome to the Big Ten moment with a 42-13 dismantling of the Bruins. They then followed that up with a 52-14 win over Charlotte. Heading into the game against Maryland, Indiana was searching for their first 5-0 start since 1967. Signetti told the media, I don't think we've probably played the most difficult schedule up to this point. I'm not trying to shortchange anybody we've played. Tests are going to become tougher week in and week out. Indiana overcame four turnovers to beat Maryland 42-28. Their defense held Maryland to one score in the final 22 minutes. Heading into this week, Indiana was ranked in the AP poll for the first time since 2021, being ranked number 23. Indiana had 48,323 fans show up to the stadium that holds 52,626 fans. Following the game, Signetti said, You could feel the fans out there. I'm glad that they keep improving in the attendance area. I thought that was a good turnout, and good is the enemy of great, so let's have a great turnout. Let's sell it out next time. We're at home and figure out how to make things even louder because that's what we want to do. We want to be the best in everything we do. Vegas had Indiana's win total at 5.5 heading into this year, and they may surpass that this week. Indiana football has won 8 games only in the last 30 years. Hoosiers have won 9 games just twice in their entire history. When it comes to the college football playoff, according to Bleacher Report, they had them ranked suddenly shockingly relevant following week 4 of the season. The team that was picked to finish 17th in the Big Ten could find themselves competing for the Big Ten title. They have won their 5 games by double-digit scores, and it's the first time they have won five straight games by double digits since 1905. Rourke has looked good throwing for 1,372 yards, 11 touchdowns, and only two interceptions so far this season. They travel to Northwestern this weekend, followed by their bye before they host both Nebraska and Washington, or traveling to Michigan State. They win those games, they could set up a crucial matchup against number 10 Michigan, or a bye followed by a game on the road against number 3 Ohio State, or hosting Purdue to close out the season. I don't know how the rest of Indiana season will go, but I do know it's been a quick turnaround by Kirk Signetti, and what he has put together in Bloomington is truly amazing. What do you think? What is Indiana's final record come the end of the season? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.